we've got the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee. Loaded with everything in it. Let's check it out. The Grand V8, wow. It's got a Hemi. All right, let's get into it. What's under the hood of this and what else can you get? A 5.7 liter V8 engine with an eight speed automatic transmission, 357 horsepower and 390 pound feet of torque. Now the base engine is the trusty 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 with an eight speed automatic, 293 horsepower and 257 pound feet of torque. All vehicles sold in Canada come with all wheel drive. However, on the base model, you can get rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. There is also a plug-in option called the 4xE with 375 horsepower and 470 pound feet of torque. We are driving the antidote to the plug-in hybrid, the V8. I'm surprised they didn't send us that one. Uh, it would have been nice to drive the 4xE. We did drive the Wrangler and I quite liked it. And I but, think we're moving towards electrification. So that would have been nice. But this is fun. All this right. Fun. Uh, what do you get with the base model? What are the key standard features? The base trim comes with an 8.4 inch touchscreen with Uconnect 5, a 10 and a quarter inch digital gauge cluster, heated cloth front seats, eight way power driver seat, a heated steering wheel, 17 inch wheels, a spare tire, LED headlights and LED tail lights, blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert, and Quadra Track 1 4x4 system. We've got this mode selector. We have rock, sand, snow, auto, sport. What are we going to put it in? You got to put it in S for subscribe. And if you can hit that notification bell, you'll be notified when all of our reviews drop and then you can watch them. And we do this, the couple car review twice a week. The first one drops on Wednesday. We drop another one on Saturday. So make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, but also follow along on Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrea to get a sneak peek what's going on behind the scenes. For me, it's motormouth underscore auto and the links are below. This video is brought to you by Canada Drives. Shop online for your next used vehicle and enjoy the convenience of two-year door delivery and the confidence of a seven-day love it or return it guarantee. Visit canadadrives.ca to learn more. So the Grand Cherokee straddles mainline vehicles and then luxury, which is the one they sent over here. But what I love about it, they all still drive like trucks and Jeeps. They sure do. This has got three four by four systems available. So whether you are dealing with heavy snow in your daily commute or you decide to go off roading, this is very capable. We've got the top trim, the Summit Reserve, and this has got the Quadra Drive 2 4x4 system. It also comes with an electronic limited slip rear differential and air suspension. Yeah. Now, air suspension in this class is not common. And what they've added for 2022 is you get the air suspension, but you also get adaptive dampers included in that. Yeah. And then the terrain settings that we talked about, we'll take it out of subscribe now and yeah. just put it in regular. Uh, but the thing is that this is a very capable SUV. A lot of vehicles that this competes against look the part. This yeah. one is the part. And you can get all of these extra systems on the Trailhawk and above trims. And that's worth pointing out. They brought yeah. a Trailhawk version of the Grand Cherokee out for 2022 for people that really need to use the all wheel drive capabilities. Yeah. So air suspension does a couple of things, Andrea. It can make it more comfortable. Mm -hmm. It can make it sportier. You can also raise it up to do deep snow going on the Scottish trails, that yeah. sort of stuff. With the air suspension, the Grand Cherokee is capable of 24 inches of water fording and it gets 11.3 inches of ground clearance. Without it, 8.4 inches of ground clearance. So the air suspension is a unique market. Yeah. Not many people will buy it, but it's kind of a cool thing. I've always been a fan of the Grand Cherokee. It's been one of my favorites for style. It still has that rugged and bold look to it. I think the front grille looks great. I'm not a big fan of the front of this. I think if you changed the Jeep grille and put in a Ram grille, it looks kind of pickup trucky a little bit from the front, mm -hmm. but that's just me. I think the overall look of this thing from 10 paces away, it looks exactly what you're expecting from Jeep. Yeah. It's classy, it's rugged, it's all of those things combined. You decide. Uh, I wouldn't order it in rental car red myself, <laughs> but, uh, but I do appreciate the way it looks. This Summit Reserve trim has got the platinum chrome accents. It has 21 inch wheel, standard or only 17 inch. I think you'd have to upgrade on that. It looks quite beefy with the larger wheels. 
So we have a great hot topic coming up about is this vehicle moving up market to compete with brands like say BMW or Mercedes-Benz? And I would say with this top trim, look out Germans, this is yeah. fantastic. The fit and finish in here is beautiful. We've got a full leather interior with orange stitching in the Summit Reserve model. And then there's the tack, it's all new. We've got a 10.1 inch touchscreen in the center, a 10 inch, which is an interactive passenger touchscreen, and then a standard 10 and a quarter inch digital driver display. It really is first rate. Yeah. You know, uh, FCA, formerly Chrysler, used to have plastic fantastic interiors and they're like reformed smokers. Yeah. They've gone so far the other way now. This rivals anything from any other brand at this price point. In fact, considering the price, it might actually be better. The only thing I wished is that it offered more trims within the interior. This has got a wood trim. Some of the base trims from what I can see online come with black, but I don't know if it's high gloss black. It would be nice to see some brushed aluminum or maybe even a darker wood. So dimensionally, this is a bigger Grand Cherokee. How much more room do you get up front? You've got an inch more front leg room. Okay, here's me getting in the back seat. Now the Grand Cherokee is now available with a three row version called the L. This is just the five passenger model. Yeah. So there's plenty of leg room in here. Is it bigger than before? It's the same size really, a tiny bit more than what you got in the previous model. But when you open up the cargo area at the back, there is an enormous amount of cargo capacity and it was no problem for carry-on and a cooler, right? Yeah, and it is bigger than the previous model, whether it's overall cargo capacity or space behind the second row. It's not best in class. Some of the competition does offer more space. So Andrea, what's the best value trim? The limited trim for just over $60,000 Canadian and just over $47,000 US. That's where you're gonna find leather seats, heated front and rear seats, a wireless charger, and a power lift gate. What I also like about that trim is you can add packages to the trim, which include getting the 10.1 inch touchscreen. Trims below that, you can can't have that as an add-on. So the limited trim is definitely the way to go. Time now for questions, coffee and cars. Your questions from Instagram. I really like the Grand Cherokee. My family has owned numerous Stellantis vehicles and we've always loved them. I think the only downfall of the Grand Cherokee is the question of reliability, as Stellantis is not necessarily known for their reliability. Well, things are improving over at Stellantis, FCA, yeah. Chrysler, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they are moving up in quality scores. Dodge is right near the very top. Yeah. Uh, Jeep isn't as strong, but it's getting better. JD Power released its 2022 dependability study and Jeep has a below average rating, which isn't great, close to where Mercedes-Benz is. But the 2021 Grand Cherokee gets a predicted quality and reliability score from JD Power of 84 out of 100. But that's the old model. It is, it's right? not this model. Yeah, so that model came out in 2009, yeah. it's ancient, and they perfected it as they went along. Interestingly, I, um, used to have a radio show here in Vancouver and I interviewed Dave Sargent from JD Power and I always asked him at the end personally not on, on the show I said yeah. what are you driving right now and one time he says oh I've got a Cayenne diesel which we ended up buying yeah. and then uh, about a year or so later I asked him what are you driving now he says I've got a Grand Cherokee there you and go. I said oh you're in the quality game is it good he says this is one of the bright spots for back then FCA but if you're worried about this one wait a year until it's been out sometimes it's best to wait yeah, and, uh, wait. and and buy afterwards once all the kinks are uh, ironed out doesn't mean there's going to be kinks but you never know an interior makes or breaks a vehicle for me and i think that jeep knocked the design of this interior out of the park minus the black plastic it looks better to me than almost every other car on the market but does it feel as good as it looks well, the seats don't. They're Ew. they're they're firm, right? They're really firm, and the back seat is really firm. I drove our son to school, and he sat here, and he said, "Whoa, these are really uncomfortable." So, um, it's not the best. It's hard to get comfortable in them. I think overall, the wood trim in here—it's not my favorite, but it's of great quality. 
it's the piano black yeah, that too much is of it. not the best. Well, the problem is it just shows. I mean, we've had this car for a week now. It's got dust and fingerprints all over it. It's just a trend that has to go away, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, but it's cheap, and it looks when it's clean good uh, i would say the interior design is fantastic in yeah. this it's beautifully done it's easy to use which is really good but the seats in this trim anyway are too firm and also there's a lot of soft materials used in here you will be hard pressed to find hard plastic like even the bottom of the doors have soft materials yeah. We put out a lot of content each week on the Motormouth YouTube channel and it's so easy to find. All you do is go to the search bar on YouTube and type in the name of the channel, Motormouth, then the brand you're looking for, in this case Jeep, then all of our videos will pop up. It's that easy. With plug-in hybrids being so powerful and efficient these days and gas prices soaring, is there even a point in considering the regular V6 and V8 options? The price! Yeah. It's 20 grand more to get the plug-in version of this over the base model gas. Yeah, $20,000. That's a lot of gas. Yeah, so it starts over $75,000 in Canada. Actually, no, $20, $23,000. Yeah, it's expensive, but you know, it it all comes down to trims, right? And what you're getting in each of those trims. You can get the base model V6 or the V8 and you have to add extra packages. You have to do that with the 4xE as well, but you've really got to take a look at what features you're getting in it. It's, it's a better priced, deal in the States is what I was going to yeah, say. Yeah, it's much better in the States at over $58,000 at that base price and you qualify for the tax credit up to $7,500. But in Canada, um, there's no federal rebate of $5,000 because it doesn't start under $45,000. And I think if you're spending 75 grand large yeah. on a luxury SUV, you shouldn't get a tax credit, in my opinion. Although I would love to get the 4xE. I would rather have an electrified vehicle than to drive a V8. Gas prices are soaring, but it's the price and it's just not affordable for many. I, I don't know. I don't think this would, I don't know. I'd have to try it. But a, a, but a turbo four cylinder, and then mm -hmm. electrified in this, eh, I don't know. The old 3.6 liter V6 in this is bulletproof. That you can take to the bank. It's a really good engine. Just shop there, I think. But the torque in the 4xE, it's a monster. And so you would definitely have to try it and see. We drove the Wrangler 4xE and I quite liked it. And now it's time for our hot topic. What's this one, Andrea? My boyfriend has a 2017 limited luxury two package and I was always impressed with the amount of features and luxury amenities. This one seems to take that to a whole new level and looks like a full blown luxury SUV inside and out. Is Jeep trying to go up market? And is this a good luxury SUV contender? So the one thing, Andrea, that a lot of people forget is that Stellantis or Chrysler does not have a luxury division, yeah. right? So General Motors has Cadillac, Ford has Lincoln, arguably Stellantis has Jeep. So at the bottom end of the Grand Cherokee, they're competing with mainline midsize SUVs. Yeah. But in this one, the top trim, I think this competes with some very high-end products. Yeah, this Jeep definitely floats between non-luxury and luxury brands, especially with a starting price just over $52,000 Canadian and just under $41,000 US. The thing about Jeep that I find though is that with packages and a la carte items, it gets pricey really fast. So it really depends on your budget, but this fully loaded top trim is coming in at where the BMW BMW X5 and the GLE 450 start. Okay, so think about a GLE for example. GLE, available air suspension. Yeah. This top trim has air suspension. An available V8 in the X5 and the GLE. This also with a V8 engine. Yeah. And you get an amazing off-road system that arguably those two products just don't have. No. So when you start looking at this model that we're driving here, the Summit, with the V8 and the air suspension, it is way cheaper than those German competitors, has amazing towing capacity. Yeah. So it does compete on a luxury level if you want it to, but you don't have to go crazy like this. No, you don't. And then it's about badge appeal. Some people want to buy a BMW and a Mercedes-Benz because they want kind of to be in that exclusive club. The question is, does Jeep offer that? Well, it's interesting. I was at the launch 
of the last model in 2009 yeah. and they actually did a survey of Grand Cherokee owners. Grand Cherokee owners could buy what they wanted but they wanted a Jeep. Yeah. So there's something about this brand that the others don't have. I don't know what it is but it's something. The midsize category is kind of interesting to have just two rows of seats. Most have three rows yeah. but we selected a few for you to look at. For your consideration four vehicles for you to consider. Up first is the Honda Passport. It has a 3.5 liter V6 engine with 280 horsepower and a starting price of just over $45,500. The Volkswagen Atlas Crossport with a 2 liter turbo 4 cylinder, 235 horsepower, or the engine you should get, the 3.6 liter VR6 with 276 horsepower. The base model starts at just under $40,000. The Mercedes Benz GLE 450 has a 3 liter in line six turbo with EQ boost, 362 horsepower and a starting price of just over $81,500. Here's our used car alternative from CanadaDrives.ca. We chose a 2020 Jeep Grand Cherokee high altitude with just 49,000 kilometers on the clock for $52,990. Click on the tab or the link in the description below to find more vehicles in this category from canadadrives.ca. So there are four midsize SUVs for you to consider. This is a capable utility vehicle. How much can it tow? How much fuel does it drink? All that kind of stuff with their vital stats. Let's start with pricing. The all-wheel drive model with the V6 engine starts at just over $52,500 Canadian and just under $41,000 US. The top trim is just over $79,000 Canadian and just over $65,000 US. To add the V8 engine, it's $3,695 Canadian and $3,795 US. Here's the fuel economy for the V6, 12.3 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, 9.2 on the highway. That's 19 miles per gallon city, 26 miles per gallon highway. For the V8, it's 16.7 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, 10.9 on the highway. That's just 14 miles per gallon in the city, 22 miles per gallon highway. The 4xe gets 4.2 liter equivalent per 100 kilometers. That's 56 miles per gallon equivalent. The Grand Cherokee has much better towing capacity than most midsize SUVs with 6,200 pounds for the V6 and 7,200 pounds for the V8. The warranty is three years, 60,000 kilometers or 36,000 miles. Lightning round, two things we like, two things we like to see improved. I like the way this looks. And it has amazing capabilities. And what I'd love to see is just another trim level instead of this wood on the higher trims. And it's not just Stellantis, but everybody's got to back off on the piano trim. Pump yeah. the brakes. <laughs> Stylish, sporty, and powerful. This is a real winner for Jeep. We waited a long time to get an all-new Grand Cherokee. It was worth the wait. This video is brought to you by Canada Drives. Shop online for your next used vehicle and enjoy the convenience of to-your-door delivery and the confidence of a seven-day love-it-or-return-it guarantee. Visit canadadrives.ca to learn more.